All right. Good morning, everybody. The room is filling up. Great to see uh, an engagement. Great to see uh, a lot of you joining in here. While others are still joining this session, um, we would like to kick off today for Cluden and Microsoft Fabric and how to unlock the full potential of Microsoft's powerful analytics suite. And uh, before we dive into the topic, I'm very pleased uh, to see today in here in our latest session um, of our series with Microsoft, um, my guest, Claudio Mirti with me. Hi, Claudio. Hi, sir. Thanks for having me. Thank you for joining in. You guys enjoying this session today, I can only highly recommend to you after our webinar, please feel free to register yourself for our next webinar in the series with Microsoft at Cludin slash webinars, where you will find uh, our upcoming session for 10 powerful use cases, how to accelerate your success with data governance, thanks to Cludin and Azure OpenAI. And without further ado, um, I would say let's kick it off. <laughs> okay, perfect. Thanks, thanks a lot, sir. And so, uh, Claudio Mirti, as was mentioned before, so I'm since seven and a half years at Microsoft, I'm covering EMEA as an advanced analytics and AI specialist. So, but let me guide you through a little bit about the topic about Microsoft Fabric, where we announced uh, ladies in, in May. It was a couple of months ago already. And uh, yeah, it should be okay. I mean, you see my screen, that's all good. And uh, certain confirmed, perfect. So let me start. So I like to start as we always get into that topic about AI. So let's ask maybe Azure OpenAI in this case, what does it mean for me if I if I've heard Microsoft Fabric? What does it mean about Microsoft Fabric? What it is? So if I'm asking, if I'm asking uh, Azure OpenAI, it's just clear. Of course, Microsoft Fabric is an all-in-one analytics solutions that covers everything from data management to data science, real-time analytics, data engineer. You read it, of course. But um, it was a little bit of joke aside because you know everywhere you hear now AI generative AI. What does it mean? Well, I will unveil a little bit how that will be combined in the analytics piece and how data and generative AI can be really helpful in this new way of combining analytics and open AI in this case. So, but let's start a little bit where it's coming from, not of course from the AI side, but a little bit from a CDO side. And I really like this sentence. When we start with Microsoft Fabric, I think we have started to listen to our customer in terms of, hey, I don't want to be the chief integration officer. I want to be the chief data officer. Why? Because we wanted to bring a simplified approach in this topic to really combine a scalable analytics platform for business users and as well for specific roles where I will guide you through. So, and to be honest, I mean, over the years, this is a little bit some example of architecture that you have seen, or maybe you get familiar or you say, well, uh, yeah, legacy, I know how it is. So it's a little bit that part where you see, you know, analytics project with a lot of subsystems, a lot of legacy systems, and then also different class of products or different products for different specific use cases or capabilities. Um, it's one product for data integration, the other part for really processing it, then another one to really visualize. And as these are complex and fragmented different topics and of course then time over time and then it takes it takes some complexity in that part to also manage it and how we can bring that value then as well in terms of end to end but also simplify the certain approach this is where we say the analytics for the era of ai where we started with microsoft fabric as a solution in this case. With Microsoft Fabric, I think we bring together experiences such as data engineering, data factory, data science, data warehousing, and real-time analytics and Power BI in a shared 
SaaSification approach, so SaaS Software as a Service Foundation, where we integrate really providing also different advantages in this part. So, I mean, it's integrated with analytics engine that you have combined in the industry. We also do only one with an open format in that part with the one lake approach that we have say the Delta Lake. And then also that developers can easily access and reuse all the assets in this aspect. Then the other parts like uh, the shared experience across the different family and easy to use and learn approaches. And then also the unified data lake that really allows you to retain the, the data where it is and while you're using like a preferred analytics tools in this case. And then of course the centralized administration and governance across all the experience. That means it's actually nothing new. What we have done is a little bit listen to our customer when they started to using and they were really happy with Power BI. So we brought all the capabilities I mentioned before, data engineering, data factory and so on, to the Power BI user experience and built the software as a service approach as a one analytics engine. And when I mentioned before with the different roles, I mean, this is a little bit where we coming from. That means you have sometimes heard the terminology about the citizen data scientist or the citizen analyst or even also the data engineer. So that means we want really to enable the different personas that they can use in one single environment and a seamless integration and user experience to process the different data aspects. So think about it like the data engineer that the process of preparing all the integration part, the data scientist working in his machine learning environment, and then even the analysts were building their reports. As we say, coming from that area, from the Power BI side, just integrated all the other capabilities in one user experience. And this enables really also business people to work with the data and also have a central approach in terms of with this one leg approach and also combined with governance and security aspects where they only see what they need and also get integrated with other tools that they already started. As we say before, Synos will still be integrated in the new approach um, integration with Databricks as well. So everything there. And even we went one step ahead that we said with shortcuts, we are enabling even as free GCP and others will follow, but as free storage that you not have to copy the data. It's a one copy approach, so it will be virtualized and then you don't have to have that in several, you know, building different silos of your data. So you have it still where it resides on, but for the end use who is processing it using the shortcut capabilities, virtualized data that to get access and building the reports and processing for their business needs and getting insights in this case. So. And to make that a little bit more tangible, uh, a little movie to showcase the user experience and also the way how the seamless integration looks like. So we already say it's we want to start to, to give the capabilities with the trial so business can start to use it. There is a free trial in terms of they can start to apply it and then to really then import and process the different aspects of the data part and, and see that unified experience where you see the different items to integrate, process, manage, and then combine with data designs or then of course then visualize it with Power BI in one environment and really play with it. And then last but not least, where we also announce is like to the era of AI in terms of co-pilot, also the terminology with co-pilot, we said, look, we are helping the user. What you see now is really leveraging large language models to process data and to create reports and helping with large language models. That's the reason we say co-pilot to really support the user to create <laughs> new visualization and reports. Five seconds to sign up and five minutes to wow. This was a little bit also like 
the way that we say it from the user experience, uh, we want to really have this easy to use, but also that every business user is able to use the capabilities building in Fabric. Also on the way that I mentioned before that with citizen data scientists, a business user, if you remember the approaches of the different data architecture on data mesh to enable organization that they can work on their data and bring it back and share all the data in the different organizations, but being a little bit independent to build new data products in that part. This is the way where fabric fits perfectly because business users are independently, but from the government approach, you have a unified analytics platform. And again, a lake centric approach and, <laughs> and uh, open in this area, you can empower the business users through the Power BI side. You have all the AI goodness with Microsoft Fabric Copilot. That means really large language models now in Copilot for Power BI, but also in the other features and capabilities, helping you out to build new machine learning scripts uh, or function in terms of uh, free um, out of fill of the different uh, scripts, like you know it from GitHub Copilot. Similar uh, user experience, it's the same thing with the Copilot aspects. And then, of course, the capacity model that means for the cost reduction, a unified capacity model to simplify the charges. That means how you <coughs> will charge in this case and uh, being used to to also say, well, I don't have to pay for storage and then for the processing part as well separately. So you have the capacity model. That means imagine in the evening you do a lot of data integration aspects and then during the day you do a lot of processing and uh, um, visualization of the tools. So whatever it is needed, you have this capacity models and transparency and then cost comparison in terms of overview when what was used. Good. I mean, this is a sneak peek in terms of when we started with people are trying it now, it's now in public preview, and of course, more and more. And with the simplification of this classification approach, new feature can be rolled out really quickly. And this is what we say actually, nothing new. We just applied the Power BI experience and brought in all the different capabilities in one SaaS environment and build that foundation model as a unified analytics platform. But as you always know, the same thing I started at the beginning with uh, no data, no AI, it's no data, no fabric in this case. So data management is actually key and also very, very important in this aspect. And this is where I like to hand over to Surin, who will guide you through how Cluedin fits in that picture and overall from the end-to-end -end data experience. Sören, you can take over and I will stop now. Thanks a lot, Claudia. Um, yeah, I will echo what uh, you have just said regarding the full power of analytical services, analytical platforms, new analytics offerings like Microsoft Fabric will be then released when everybody here in the call, every enterprise out there is finally able to manage data better, faster, more accurate, in a more transparent but also trustful way. This is where I would like to take you now here for the next few minutes through a little bit of why Cluden is out there what we have already solved with uh, a number of our customers. Um, all of them are Microsoft Azure customers. There is a strong, strong alignment between Microsoft, the current Azure Active System, as well as the Microsoft Fabric, which is obviously one of the fundamental modernization when it comes to analytics. So the future of modern augmented data management is here. Um, now let's look a little bit behind the curtain. So what prevents you out there, our customers, enterprises that we are currently talking to from realizing the value of data investments that have already been made? I think it is without a surprise that we see a lot of investments in cloud, 
AI, machine learning, business intelligence, data lakes, data warehouses, lake houses, modern data platforms of all kind, data science teams, there are investments into very, very talented specialists from data engineers, from data analysts, from AI engineers, and so on and so forth. So what we also get as a, as what we get mirrored by the industry is we have data value inhibitors from legacy application stacks, from multiple data masters ranging in different entities of your company, different countries, different languages, and so on and so forth. To put this into a little bit more simplified perspective, what we have condensed here on this slide is the feedback that we get from customers and enterprises we talk to. And this slide shall also help us to understand that Microsoft Fabric is a great modernization, especially when it comes to copying Claudio's uh, wording here again, simplification. Simplification of data sources, of data storage, data processing engines to have this more consolidated in a simplified architecture is clearly helping us with this issue as well as with slow time to market. Clearly Fabric, I mean, Claudio was even saying five seconds, five minutes, right? We're not talking anymore about days, weeks, months, not even by far away from years that it may have taken in decades beforehand to establish large platforms. What we do see more on the top of the slide is that we somehow still look at very complex data modeling challenges, given that you are still looking at a very heterogeneous business application landscape. And still, we see challenges in the collaboration between business teams and IT teams, and all of what is in between from your shadow IT teams, from your business IT teams, from data teams and the likes. So how is Cluden helping you with that? Well, I want to echo before we dive further into Cluden and the details, just want to echo again here also the CEO of Microsoft, because this is truly at the core of the essence what we want to achieve with you all. Doing more with actually doing less. So how is that possible? Well, Cluden is the first graph-based data management engine on Azure. Little side note, also in general on the market. So Cluden is truly a pioneer in all of its kind. We've bring together the flexibility and the high data fidelity of a graph database at the core of our software architecture. And that elevates then to the benefits of a lot of automation that we can spend across that processing power. We get a lot of agility as this database and our storage mechanisms way more behave like our human thinking processes instead of a more structured database process. We get a lot of flexibility. Again, very important when you talk about adoption rates of users uh, that want to engage into data. It has to be forgiving. Mistakes are happening. Issues are happening in business processes. So we have to be quickly in fixing them. And last but not least, one of our more recent enhancements and that we have already seen now business value created in the market by our customers from is the secure integration with Azure OpenAI, where we further enhance the technical scalability of those large language models and bring this knowledge, this basically insight all kinds of different data sets towards your enterprise data. So you can enhance it and you can benefit from that. And we will talk a little bit also about a few examples. Again, just also as a second side note, mentioned in the beginning of our today's webinar, in a few weeks down the line on Cluden slash webinars, um, you will find that there is already, you can register now, a webinar happening where we talk about data governance use cases, accelerate and successfully established through this combination of Cluden and Azure OpenAI. So a few customers just to briefly highlight that have already started this journey and that have already started to benefit from data management connected to graph 
and data management connected to generative AI. I do not want to go into too much details on those clients, but what we have seen and what I want to summarize for all of you here in this slide is truly interesting because when we see how Cluden brings together cloud and ecosystem integration, we are integrating by now with more than 20 different Azure services natively. You see no code and low code, no code as a imperative in Cluden's user interface. And the graph database offering us this flexibility and this agility in the way of working with the solution and with your data. And on top of that, we see thanks to automation, a lot of those more tedious, repeatingly happening efforts to keep your data at a higher quality. This time is gone. You will benefit from the platform taking over those repetitive tasks and help you to actually lower the data maintenance efforts further and further by in the same way, giving the user through AI the ability to quicker understand the graph, quicker understand what's in front of the user and help the user if this co-pilot as Claudio here from Microsoft was saying, to have a better and faster experience that I get to the right insight and make best use of it for my business. So what we see across those customers adapting to this methodology and to this solution here is without a doubt benefits in business operations. Let's say the more classical master data management issues where we have duplicates, where we have uh, not a full understanding across our customer. So this customer 360 view where we see issues in uh, manufacturing companies sourcing materials that sometimes are slightly differently named or defined and then lead to production time, uh, downtime, or at least to supply chain issues. We see also issues when it comes nowadays to more and more ESG related compliance. So to keep up with these sustainability requirements, all of that is where Cluden has already helped. Now, further on, and this is where we are strongly aligned back towards Microsoft Fabric and the modernization that happens right now with data analytics is needless to say, as Fabio said it, you can only make true value and increased value out of your data if your data foundation is right. If you have a good understanding about the data, if it is validated, and if it is in such a way harmonized that different data consumers from different business departments in at least a state somehow talking the same language and can benefit from a central source of truth. This is where we see more and more adoption from Cluden as an acceleration towards the right data sets for your data warehouse, the right data sets for your Power BI reports, the right data sets for as well machine learning and AI, that you do not train your model in a wrong direction, which eventually you can find out with more processing, looking backwards, data quality helps to reduce your efforts. Last but not least, what is the third box? And this is where it gets interesting and where we see more and more of our customers adopting in this direction and creating very large business cases as well is application consolidation, maybe you know also the term consolidation harmonization, maybe you know the term application migration. At the end of the day, what we see in conversations with our customers, a very prominent example I assume you're all aware of, is the ongoing modernization of enterprises from current versions of their SAP application landscape towards the modern application stack of SAP with S4 and in combination often with their database S4 HANA. On that journey, a lot of enterprises that we talk to try to achieve as well a simplification of the application landscape. We talk to a manufacturing company with more than 200 ERP systems, let alone not even speaking about other business applications like CRM, MES, PLM procurement applications, HR applications. Talk to another large logistics company looking across more than 500 applications alone for their human resources department, not speaking about production, sales, marketing, 
and so on and so forth. We have a customer and we're happily to talk with you in more detail for everybody that is curious outside of this webinar. Um, obviously, there is some confidentiality with our customers around that aspect, but I'm happy to say that we are striving with one of our customers that is embarked quite far on this application consolidation journey already to reduce operational IT costs for them by up to 20%. And if you think about it from a data point of view, it gets quite clear that one of the core challenges for heterogeneous application landscapes to harmonize them is that data could reside in different applications differently. Now, when you want to consolidate your data, you have to somehow harmonize, you have to standardize. Cluden is a very smart engine helping you not only to improve business operations, not only to provide the right data foundation for your data analytics, for everybody that will embark on Microsoft Fabric as well, and also to help you accelerate your simplification of your business application landscape. Now, how are we doing that? Cluder at the end of the day is this intelligent engine that will help you to ingest data from basically any data source, independent of format, quality, structure. We source the data right into the platform. No limitations regarding data preparation. You don't have to model the data upfront and then stitch it into some kind of rigid model. Cluder consumes data as is and in the graph is then telling you what we think could be applicable to map the data into the given data estate that you have in the platform that obviously brings again a huge benefit when we talk about detecting anomalies across your data estate whether it is about deduplication it's about simplification so we talk about okay we have now here four definitions for actually the same material or the same customer a claim or the same customer ticket, support ticket. Let's define this as one. Makes it again easier across our business to collaborate and communicate. We have the ability, thanks to the graph database, to enrich your data very flexibly, which means we have customers of ours utilizing a Google Maps integration to get locations validated. We have customers utilizing a connector to Dun & Bradstreet to get the liquidity of your vendors validated. We see customers using integration to all kinds of available web sources to enhance information on customers, on products, um, to utilize information available for marketing efforts and so on. And last but not least, again, all of that would be in a way a very helpful extension to your current data efforts, but it would not be as strong if it wasn't for our seamless integration into your data governance and your data cataloging layers. What does that mean? Include in whenever you fix data, whenever you define as a business user that actually those three customer records should be consolidated into one single golden customer record. Then we track everything from who changed it, when you changed it, why did you change it, and can seamlessly update your governance layer as well as your catalog layer. Or we can also trigger workflows into your governance to say, should the data steward, as Claudio was mentioning, this is one of those roles, should the data steward now have a check with the business user if this was correctly updated or if there was anything missed maybe in this process of improving your data quality ultimately with the benefit that we see business users strongly empowered here to engage into your data supply chain through this no code user interface that we talked about and with the ultimate goal obviously that we get the data on the right side here out towards data consumption whether it is through power bi reports whether it is for um, your analytics teams, whether it is for your data warehouse, or whether it is that uh, operating processes on business applications like SAP or Salesforce, as an example, you listed. 
are then running more smoothly with less issues or more efficiently. Now, a very, very brief insight only into our architecture, because we can certainly talk in way more detail with you about how this entire solution works and how it natively integrates with uh, your Microsoft Azure ecosystem, with the services you may have already established and with the services that you may strive to establish. Um, we see customers also utilize including commonly in combination with Power Platform, with Power Apps, Power Workflows. Um, but again, as said, also with uh, Azure Machine Learning, for example, um, or the typical consumption layers like Power BI. Um, and of course, we are working very closely with Microsoft on this seamless integration with Microsoft Fabric so that when we evolve towards this next more simplified analytics platform, we have again all of those benefits from Clued and Applied. One thing I want to now spend another minute on to, to explain in a little bit more detail why this for us and for our customers is such a game changer is this integration of Azure OpenAI. And for that, um, I want to give you an, a hit. Basically, I want to share with you here, and you can also watch this entire interview on our website. Where you will find our CEO, Tim Ward, talking about this integration and what actually this generative AI does to master data management and in, to data management in, in general. And the interesting thing that we found out why Cluden here is so different to other solutions that you have probably already seen as well integrating with generative AI and in particular with Azure OpenAI is that the graph database and the data, the highest data fidelity that we have in the graph. So basically this very, very more neuronal network view on data records in comparison to a more structured way of records gives us this flexibility to actually quite flexibly connect with this very, very large language models that are out there. So what happens ultimately for you as a business user when you raise a prompt or any kind of interaction with the data through Cluden and address this large language model, the Cluden will automatically in the background contextualize the prompt and the data that we receive from the prompt from the large language model with the data in the graph as it fits towards the patterns that we see in the graph. And what it means, and our CEO is talking exactly about this example in this video, what it means to put it into a practical example is when Tim and Tim Ward, I'm not from Australia, I'm located here in Germany. Tim though <laughs> said that uh, in Australia, that is a quite common name. As in German, we would probably translate to Max Mustermann. Now, when you raise a prompt to ChatGPT, to OpenAI in general, who is Tim Ward? Certainly it has a challenge to answer you that question, given that there's just a hard qualification where the software or where the large language model tends to calculate a higher probability. The same prompt raised through the Cluden's UI. While, and let's be fair, Tim was uploading a little bit of data into the platform, as well as was unlocking our enricher speaking about external data being accessible for the platform, he was unlocking the enricher to LinkedIn. Within a blink of an eye for the same prompt, platform gives us back in the UI as yes, for the business user, Tim Ward is the CEO of Cluden. Why? Because the prompt was contextualized by the data in the graph. And this is where it gets really powerful. And this is where we get feedback from customers like Frederick here that is saying all the things I need my developers to help me with. So again, right, where we had breaks in a process, where we had to wait and where we had backlogs, where we had a burden on IT and data people. Not that he was saying he doesn't want to collaborate with them, right? It is just too much request 
on central data teams that is not scaling for the business. Now he can dust it himself with Clued and Azure and OpenAI. What a powerful message. We estimated over 150 days to achieve our data quality project goals with Clued and we've improved our data quality from 42% to 85 in just under 10 days, only nine. Picture this. You're in a very large transformation program and eventually you find out that data quality is a severe issue of keeping your timeline. You expect to improve your data quality to a level that will help you eventually in this project to move on in half a year. And you engage with Cludin and you get it, get it done in two weeks. This is the power of scalability, agility, and automation that can be brought here towards those large and complex projects where data is coming from a lot of different applications and data models. And very often with the data quality issues that were hidden under the surface, as long as you don't bring the data up towards, for example, an analytical platform. Data management is therefore, in our point of view, more and more centered around business outcomes. And finally, we get to an answer how we can close the gap between data, IT, and business. It's not saying we don't need IT any longer, please, right? Let's be, let's be serious here. It is about the better collaboration between the different teams that are more and more working on a central simplified environment like Microsoft Fabric and collaborate more closely, but also more, more decentrally so you can utilize the scale of your organization. This is why we emphasize strongly on this theme by the business for the business. Because at the end of the day, we want to get this business bought into it. We want to bring them into the process. We want to give them an interface so they can collaborate uh, and we make use of our larger organization and of all our data to increase data value. So last but not least, I hope you're still with me. I know it was quite a lot of content, but I want to try to summarize again what we see with Clued-in happening in those projects. We see an extremely increased go-to-market speed. So we see a faster implementation, a lot faster, in fact, which comes very, very handy and in line with Microsoft Fabric's promise to everybody in five seconds registered in five minutes, the first wow moments. We see a lot of manual work to be minimized. And again, we do not only see this as a cost saving. Yes, helpful for data projects that are often struggling with early business cases until you justify the investment. But also it helps to bring more and more people actually engage with your data because often and there was resistance that when I actually engage with data, <laughs> I also have to work with the data and I have to maintain it and I have to do all kinds of stuff to make sure that we have the data correct. No data source restrictions and adding Azure OpenAI with a lot of the benefits as I mentioned, we will talk also further into another webinar about it in more detail, what it brings for data governance. And there will be also other engagements, other conversations, what it brings to data transformations, what it brings to uh, data analytics. Zero upfront data modeling is truly a ambition that Cluden has set out time back and that today is live. You do not have to prepare data to be able to ingest it into Cluden and make use of the platform's scalability and algorithms that are running in the background, scanning your data, understanding where are issues and how to fix it. You can build single use of anything. Um, that is, I would say, without a doubt, one of the key use cases that we talk to with custom with yeah with enterprises out there. But there's a single view on my customers, on my regulatory compliance on my procurement pricing, on the prices that I at which level I procure, at the, my supply chain resilience. I want to see any, everything, anything in, in a trusted manner. Now that this all comes with increased cost efficiency, I think speaks by itself. The cloud scalability helps a lot. Cluden is born in the cloud and it's ready for you out there to make now 
those business value ads happening. With that being said, we want to thank you all for listening in here. And I would open it up to the questions that we received. And uh, I'm really looking forward to engage further with everybody of you into a discussion. Please do not hesitate to reach out. Context details are listed here as well at, uh, in, the, in the slides. And um, looking forward to deep dive further with you into our solution. That's great, Soren. So I can see um, we've kicked off with a, a couple of questions so far in the chat. So uh, the first one that's come in for Claudio. So what are the most impressive ways that have you seen the tools in the Microsoft Fabric Suite be leveraged so far? I think uh, the, the most thing is like really sharing the data sets to the different uh, users. Uh, and as well, like the machine learning environment in terms of, you know, the people can start <clears throat> to bring in their notebooks experience and crunch the data and collaborate with the different uh, users in their organizations. And then afterward as well, that people who wants to dive in to consume the data to a report and that's uh, personas that like to really go deeper so they have one environment and share and collaborate. I think the collaboration aspect is one key aspect that I see that really makes the users happy. Fantastic, thank you very much. And another one for Soren. So based on the conversations you've had this year, what are the most common ways that data leaders are seeking to leverage Azure OpenAI on their business data? What kinds of problems do they tend to, to come to you with and how are they looking to, to leverage that tooling? That's a good question. <laughs> I would say, I would say the conversation that we have with those companies is twofold. Um, one is that uh, we get requests for specific issues that uh, shall be solved. And one is the conversation about what is actually possible now through those new technological advancements. And I think there are we still just scratching the surface of what is actually possible. Um, one of the core problems definitely that we get faced with and where companies and enterprises think Azure OpenAI can help them a lot with is definitely the uh, harmonization of typology across your company, of semantics across your um, company, basically. Because Azure OpenAI and General does this generative AI is very, very powerful when it comes to standardization of different values. Um, giving you a, a example again of a, of a company that we talk to that is in the um, consumer packaged goods environment and where in the past they had in almost every country, uh, partially out of the different languages, but also partially out of the more um, yeah, heterogeneous uh, history that they had, also situations with a lot of M&A activities. So bringing together different businesses, different application stacks, uh, and turned out that uh, in fact, the same product or the same material the same ingredient for one of their products. Got what, 40, 50 different definitions across the business. Um, and Azure OpenAI and Generative AI is very strong in understanding at, at 10x of our human brain, you could probably say at, at least to understand how those complexities should evolve back into one standard. Um, and uh, yeah, this, let's say, standardization uh, challenge is something that uh, we see quite, quite commonly as a question. Fantastic, thank you. We've just had another one come in. So this one is for Claudio and it says, the highest cost for using Azure Data Factory is cloud data movement to the point where uh, it's one of the reasons we are looking at alternatives. So they've asked, will this be addressed with Fabric as this is a limiting factor, I think, for this particular asker for a, a true single data layer. 
So there are different aspects in this case. So it always <laughs> depends as well what's in what kind of uh, how many times you want to copy the data or to move the data in that part and of course is it needed in, in this area so it, it depends really on the use case so there are different aspects how we can optimize in this case so as we know with data facts with the different connectors in that part but it's also like how the data will be stored so sometimes it's also like the way if or depending what kind of storage area that it is, we're using shortcuts, as I mentioned before, so virtualization in this case, or in other as aspects is like how we optimize that with the, the landing in this case. Of course, with the one lake approach in this part is, is that part where we can really optimize that in, in this case, um, but it really depends also from the movement, you know, timing uh, what kind of dates you know it has to be overnight and then how much uh, so they have a lot of dependencies but to be honest i think we always find in depending on the use case a way how to optimize in that part and i mean this is also an aspect where we are taking care together with the customer to work on that and this is where we call that the design architecture session where we really review and go to the different aspects even to identify you want to build, you know, raw data and the different landing zones because even also connectivity has different impact in this case. But more than happy to to step them aside and then reach out. You have my name, so then just ping me on on LinkedIn <laughs> and then more than happy. So I re already received one ask so over that part. So more than happy. Fantastic. That's brilliant, Claudia. Thank you. Um, now, just while we're waiting for additional questions to come in, I will selfishly uh, take an opportunity to ask. Uh, an extra one. So I think with with the idea of bringing business users into the supply chain of data, which is something that I know that Microsoft Fabric and Cluedin both are enabling, that can um, that can result in perhaps a change in operations in the way that uh, businesses have tended to work so far. And obviously we know the best way to drive any kind of meaningful change like that is to get the buy-in of a senior stakeholder or senior stakeholders within the business. I wondered if you both had any advice for people joining today who might be interested in pitching this kind of this new way of operating, bringing people into the supply chain of data using the tools of of uh, Clued in and Microsoft Fabric that they could um, they could take to to make their pitch a little bit stronger. So um, open floor to both of you for that one. Do you want to start or shall I? You you can start. I will I will follow. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I think at the end of the day, I, I do not want to oversimplify things. Obviously, this is a, a complex question. The further you go into the detail of your specific enterprise, um, I think on a headline level, we talk about what, so what's the business case, right? The business case for change. What is the economical reason for change? And what we see out there with companies that is unfolding mainly across four pillars. Where do we grow? Where do we stay? Where do we get increased efficiency? So the utilization of our resources, the increase of productivity, uh, and where are we more compliant? So we reduce risk and associated costs with risk. And at the end of the day, we see data as one of those rarely happening, but very important asset that is at the core of all of them, right? We see, I think hardly companies these days argue that when I get a stronger compliance and stronger um, regulatory in place on sustainability, that this would be measured by a big fund rather than saying, OK, we need a lot of data to actually justify that we reduce our CO2 emission efforts in our production line, for example. So at the end of the day, a business case is possible thanks to better data. Uh, and one of the interesting aspects maybe that could be something, you know, as, as, a, as a really creative idea to add on top of that, that we recently discussed with uh, next to Microsoft also um, our strategic partner PwC was um, the discussion around data monetization. So that in fact, not just the data that you improve is resulting back into improving your sales organization, improving your procurement organization, helping save costs by harmonizing IT applications. But also it could potentially even open up new revenue streams that you uh, can monetize data. Just as an idea, I think could be very interesting because 
that might open up a very scalable revenue stream in comparison to your maybe more classical revenue streams. Fantastic, thank hey. you. Claudio, um, any, any thoughts or anything you'd like to add? Well, I can just add, and, and thanks for that, sir. And I mean, you, you said the business case and the business benefit in that part. And I see another aspect in the value. Think about it a couple of years ago. I mean, we say every business starts or ends up in Excel because Excel was used like intensively. You see even... I saw certain uh, other customers. I remember well, a couple of years ago, it's like if you see the CRM application built in Excel. Of course, it works as well, but it's not means to be as a tooling. What I want to say is like we try really to simplify. So, I mean, the user experience is key. So, everything is about UX. Okay. The other part is about personas. We have people, well, okay, they spent many years, of course, it's they started it, but we have other people as well in the business who want to consume the data, but they don't have maybe that skills, but they can learn. So we have to bridge building a bridge a little bit to reduce that gap in terms of people want to use, but getting the same insights, but that everyone has the same view on, on the single source of truth in terms of the data. So to avoiding like shadow IT or shadow data structure or different silos, this is the real one saying simplify, but based as well on the business case and on the other side as well, combining that user experience that everyone gets access in that tooling or environment that it feels comfortable. And I think the human centered approach is key to understand the data point and even to understand what shows that visuals. And, and here we're coming back to the lineage capabilities. It's more and more important also than, than business and governance wise, as Soren said, where is this data coming from and who processed it and who is responsible for it? So to really have this end to end view. And this is where simplification of an analytics platform, governance and metadata management is key because this is where you bring the trust from a company that you always have the answer ready, but a trusted advice in the background. Fantastic and fantastic answers. So gentlemen, thank you both very much for that. I think we've reached the end of the questions that have come in. Obviously, uh, guests will know that if they wanted to reach out directly to the speakers you both kindly offered, they can do so. Um, yes. Or if they wanted to reach out to Clued in directly uh, for any more kind of questions they have based on this topic, if they occur to you uh, after the session closes, then please feel free to do that as well. But Soren, I'll hand over to you to, to start to close things down. Thanks a lot, Kaya. And thank you for uh, moderating that flawlessly. Thanks again to uh, our guest um, and uh, co-host, co-speaker here, uh, Claudio from Microsoft. Um, always a pleasure to collaborate. <laughs> and uh, yeah, thanks uh, for everybody listening in. Um, thanks for the questions. Um, we are very much looking forward to engage further with you. Um, do not hesitate to reach out. We can show you the platform. We can demo the integrations that we have with Microsoft. And uh, we would be really, really curious uh, to you know help you with your business cases. Thanks a lot and have a successful rest of the week.